Okay, great. Well, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Patrick Kennedy. I'm with Acuity Solutions, and today we're going to talk about managing data with Team Center. So we have a very brief agenda here. Basically, we're just going to talk very shortly about data management challenges and how a single source of product data can provide solutions to those challenges. Then we'll look at a four-part demo. But first, a word about Team Center and how we believe that right-size PDM drives greater business growth. And we focus really on three primary areas. The first off is that you can increase efficiency by over 20% just by reclaiming non-value-added time. That's time spent doing things like searching, going through emails, having um, <laughs> conversations, meetings, things to get updated status. This non-value at a time can be reduced drastically by using a system that can improve your business processes. Secondly, we also see how uh, companies can increase their productivity simply by having an intuitive user interface, uh, a smart yet simple interface that um, can bring context to the, the conversation and to the tasks that need to be uh, performed whether you're in your CAD application, office, or wherever. And third, we're focused on accelerating your ROI, your return on investment, by getting teams that are up and running quickly so that you can start getting those benefits immediately. But first, a word about the problem. There's a lot of data that gets created in the product development process from CAD files, project schedules, design specifications, requirements, and, and so on. And all these files are created by different tools. And ultimately, everybody needs to be able to get to all the information. And yet it's spread about in all different places of islands of information. And that becomes challenging for people to be able to get to the information that they need. So how are you managing your data? Well, here's a graph from Aberdeen Group showing results of a survey they did where they found that 72% of the companies surveyed still had their CAD data on file servers. So <laughs> even if they go to great lengths to you know, structure their folders so that it makes some kind of sense, you're still depending on people to do the right thing, to put the right file in the right place, to make sure there aren't copies placed elsewhere or misfiled. And yet 43% of those surveyed also had product data files on their local desktops from an IT perspective. That's pretty scary, simply because those desktops are not being backed up. And those files are probably copies of things that are also on file servers, bringing the question to mind, which one is the current one? Their study found that 34% of, of the companies surveyed actually had a single integrated PDM or PLM system where they had that single source of truth, where all the data was in one place where people can find. That's what we're focused on. And yet 33% of the companies were, <laughs> were found to have multiple PDM systems or, or PLM systems. So these are companies that understand the necessity and importance of having PDM or PLM, and yet they're stuck into a situation where they have more than one. Then to um, make matters worse, we find that there are study after study of how people are spending more time searching instead of less, and their searches are not efficient as we would hope, having to do multiple searches to find the data that they're looking for. We've all spent way too much time in our email trying to find that, that one thing that someone sent us some time ago that's so important to us today. Ultimately, a McKinsey report found that employees are spending almost two hours a day, almost a quarter of their week, just searching and gathering information. So how much of your engineering time is being wasted by these inefficiencies. I mean, think about it. Five, for every five people you have on staff, that 20% loss means you're really only getting productivity 
of four people. And on top of that, change is inevitable. Whether you're making changes to your products due to customer requirements, to um, product improvements, process improvements, or supply chain changes, changes to your product are inevitable. And someone has to figure out what's related to what. So that when you have a, a, a change to a model or a process, you know, where are the drawings, where are the assembly instructions, and so on, all these other things that also have to be changed. And not only the data that has to be changed, but also the people who use those data to be notified of the change. So what we bring to the table is Team Center which is a, a platform, modular uh, portfolio of applications that cover a wide breadth of PLM uh, capabilities to meet far-reaching needs of large and small customers. And so even though Team Center has this huge breadth of capabilities, what we're talking about today is where to start. So today we're going to be talking about managing your designs and your documents, your bombs, and your processes, your, your release process, because that's where small to medium-sized companies really need the most help. So that's what we're here to talk about today. So we have a, a demo scenario um, where a request has come in from sales for a design change. And they've already created an engineering order and filled out the engineering change request. Okay, so that's the situation. So where we're going to take it from there then is that engineering is going to have to evaluate the request. And if it's appropriate, then get the, uh, get the process started. Fill out the change notice, um, attach impact components, and then route this through an automated workflow. So what we put together here is a day in the life of demo with four specific steps, accessing data, leveraging workflow, look at the tight CAD integration, and then the reporting and compliance capabilities. So uh, before I go too much further, um, does that sound good? Sounds great. Okay, very good. All right, so let's look at um, this first one, accessing data. So what we're going to do is start by just exploring the user interface. And so uh, part of that is looking into the search and visualization capabilities. There's a robust um, search tools as well as some very strong visualization. So let me just pop over to my other screen here. Now, this is just a web browser, and I'm just going to log in as Ed, who is an engineer. Now, I'm running this on a PC, but it, it could be any um, <laughs> any device that can, you know, run an HTML5 um, web browser. So it can be used by many different uh, devices, and when I log in here, you can see that this is laid out kind of like a well, a lot like, actually, uh, Windows 10. We have different tiles where we can get to different places, do different things. And so this is kind of the, the home point for Ed. And Ed can you know, rearrange these tiles. Administrators can add things, add tiles that uh, they want to apply to the entire company or to just certain groups. But, uh, you know, Oh, and uh, also, uh, Ed can add additional tiles here, maybe uh, shortcuts to things that he wants to be able to work on. So let me uh, let me just do a quick little search. We have this search tool up in the right hand corner, and just I'm just searching on all the items that I have in the database, and right away it comes up with this nice little list, and we can see over here on the the left side that 378 results were found of, of item revisions. And I can look through this list and I can scroll through here, but 
what's even more helpful is on the right. It's automatically provided this chart for me of uh, dividing up the search results by one of the uh, tags, if you will, called manufacturing type. And so we can see there's 112 of the purchased and then assembled, machined, and so on. And any one of these, I can just go ahead and click on. And then that further refines my search requirements. So now I'm just down to those 42 results. And so with with that, I can continue to um, narrow down or drill down towards what it is that I'm looking for. So now that I've, I've picked the manufacturing type, it goes and looks at what else has been tagged and now says, oh, OK, a lot of these have been tagged by part class. So here's the different part classes. So there's some intelligence built into the um, search results interface so that it, it kind of guides the user towards finding what they need. Ultimately, it makes it much more efficient for a person to drill down to exactly what they're looking for. So what if the system doesn't guess on the right tags? Well, we have all of those available to us just by coming over to the far left side and opening up our search filters. So those things that we've already searched on, the item revision and, and picking the assembled manufacturing types, those already show up here. Also that part class that it's offering us on the right hand side. But we have a lot more available to us in, in this list so that we can drill down even further. So maybe we're looking something specifically for a certain uh, date range. Well, great, we picked that. There's one left. And in fact, it's even giving us the, um, the information about that particular item. So this is pretty common that when we go ahead and, and pick a certain item, then we get things like this overview where it's giving us information about this particular item. So we see a part number, the revision, the name, who's worked on it. We also get this nice little preview. And then there's these other tabs that we'll, we'll talk about uh, more extensively here in a moment. Also, as we were doing our search, it created this kind of breadcrumbs, kind of a list here. So I can close any of these that no longer apply and kind of back up out of my uh, search results. And same with the filters on the uh, left-hand side. We can see where they've been checked. We can uncheck those to remove them. So that allows us then to kind of look into other tags, maybe things that hadn't been there before. For example, let's look into release status. Now, release status 60 in my environment means that things are production released. So when I pick on that, now I have a, a pretty short list of just nine results. Now, we still get the, the, the list of the nine. We also still have the, the categories that the system automatically puts into a chart for us. And also notice the little black and white checkered flag. That's the graphical symbol of letting us know that these are items that are released. And any one of these, I can go ahead and just open it up and make that full screen to you know, get more information about this particular item. So here we have a, a, right up at the top, the, the part number, then the revision D and, and the name. And notice that we're highlighted on the overview tab, but there's a number of other tabs that are available to us to gather more information about this part. Again, we have the properties about it. There's that revision 60 for my production release. And then on the right, this real nice preview. But let me point out, this preview is not static. This is actually a, a 3D rendering of that particular part. So it's, it's more than just a snapshot. It's something that people can rotate around, or if I point up at the top, you can notice that we also have some tools about different ways that we can, we can measure, uh, we can uh, look at it in, in different views. Also, this little pin, if this is a part I'm going to work on often, I can pin it to my home page so that as Ed, when I go back to home, I'll have a link directly back to this part so I can get to it quickly. 
if there's a lot of parts I want to work on, I probably would want to add them to my favorites so that they're in a um, list that's quick and easily accessible so I can work on all of those uh, at a moment's notice. Also, when I'm, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, when I'm looking at an item, I get a context sensitive group of tools off to the right hand side and these tools will change based on what I have open but uh, one of the tools I want to point out is um, this where we can do things like measure uh, query things like surface area actually section the the parts so that we can cut right through them and get other information so uh, for like measuring well say I want to know what the distance is from that inside surface to this inside surface. There it is. I don't need to use a, a CAD program in order to get information off of this. Now, this is not the CAD model. This is a JT part, but it's very precise, accurate information, so we can get good um, measurements directly off of the part. We also then, when uh, taking measurements and things like that, we have other tools here. Maybe I want to capture uh, that screen. I can do that right here. Maybe I want to go ahead and uh, create a, a section of it. Now this, you know, being a um, sheet metal part, sections probably not a, a big deal, but uh, for a part that has volume, uh, this can become uh, very, very helpful to see inside of the part. Okay, and so uh, along with um, placing those, okay, maybe we don't want to keep the measurements. That's fine. I can go ahead and delete those as well. So all these tools are always over um, here on the right-hand side, and like I mentioned, they will change based on what it is that we have open. Also, um, you know, I drilled down into this part number, but uh, if I hit the the back button, I can go back to my search. It, it's not as if I, I lost my search or anything like that. And I can continue to uh, refine my uh, search results as necessary. I can go back into all those filters. So again, I can drill down to exactly what it is that I'm looking for. So with that, let me go back to the home and switch back over to um, our presentation, just so I can kind of recap where we've gotten so far. Um, the, the Team Center interface we just looked at called Active Workspace is, is a very familiar interface, very Windows 10 style. So it makes it very intuitive for people to be able to navigate through the system. And as you've seen, it has, you know, very powerful streamlined searching and being able to drill down to what it is that you're looking for. And also some very powerful visualization tools for non-CAD users so that they can understand what the part is. Bottom line, this user interface provides us fast and efficient data access. Okay, so about our day in the life demo. Well, one of the things that we need to do is leverage this system in order to process the requested engineering change. So as Ed, the engineer, we're going to take a look at this um, engineering change request and evaluate it, um, eval um, add some relevant data so that there's context to the change as we then submit this workflow so it will get routed to the, the people who are ultimately going to do the work. So let me switch back here as Ed, and I'm going to um, just go ahead and start working as Ed. So Ed was told that there's an engineering order that he needs to uh, he needs to go and look at that was sent over by sales. So I'm just going to switch my little uh, search because I know that all engineering orders start with EO. And so we have some. Uh, engineering orders already um, available to us and the most recent one showing up at the top. Um, if I'm not sure if that's the one, well, I know that uh, sales is user one, so I can refine those um, search results and lo and behold, there's just this one engineering order 
from that sales user. And so we get um, this description right off the bat saying that customers request a design change to accommodate more internal lift points and see change request and attachment with markup. Okay, so Ed's thinking, all right, well, yeah, I, I definitely wanted to take a look at the change request. But I also want to look at that uh, attachment that they marked up. Okay, so I mentioned the tabs. Now notice that the tabs here are different on the change order than on the item. So they're kind of, you know, context sensitive as well. They provide the information based on the item that's opened up. So I'm going to go and take a look at my change request. So sales says that this is a high priority. It's a customer request. And we can see some other uh, information, like there's already been a technical review, but I want to drill down into the, the full details of this. So I'm just going to hit this little open icon. Now I get details. Now let me point out, first off, that this form is completely customizable by every customer, and, and they do, right? Because every co company is just a little bit different, has different information they want to have on here. So this is kind of a example, a starting point for you so that when we implement it at your organization, we can tweak this to your needs. But it also um, helps me to be able to demonstrate the capabilities. Okay, so now back to Ed's uh, job here. So we can see that uh, there's a proposed solution, modify a cast part called clamp mounting bracket, and there's the part number. In fact, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and copy that because I'll probably want to take a good look at that particular part. So anyhow, we're going to extend the pick point reach on that. Technical view review's already been done. 80 hours for that change. Okay, so sales has, has done their job. They've, they've filled out all of that information. Mm -hmm. But let's go back and take a look at that attachment, right? So let's go into attachments. There's our Word doc, our DCR, and a PDF. So um, that's probably going to be um, helpful. So let's go ahead and just uh, take a quick look at that PDF here. So uh, when we go in and uh, open up that item, we can see the PDF. Uh, it's just the view is embedded right here in the interface. We don't have to have a separate application that we use. We can see that this is uh, current design with markup. So someone um, did a little preliminary um, investigation and gave us some, some basic um, dimensions to the overall master mover product. Okay, so I'm pretty familiar with that. So let's look for markup. So notice over here on the on the right, the tools that I mentioned. So there's my markup tool right there at the top. And when I open that up, we can see that there's been some markups made and some diagrams over here directly on the PDF. And as I uh, hover my cursor over um, each of those areas, we get the little pop-up saying who and when the, the markup was made. And how we can see it says area designated for allowable change. Okay, so that's where we want the work. And then there's another one. Um, this dimension can increase X by 50. And then there's another one. And I pick on that. It, it zooms me down to where that is. And we have um, the information at our fingertips, both um, <laughs> right here on the PDF, as well as on the markup. So this markup is actually an overlay to the PDF managed by Team Center to allow us to communicate with each other. Even though we aren't face to face, we can place the information directly here on the PDF to convey our intent and decisions that already have been made. So Ed doesn't have to get on the phone and, and call the guy in sales. He can see it right here on the screen. Okay, so this is great information, and Ed understands what the situation is now. So he's going to back out of there, back to our um, engineering order. Let's go ahead and make that uh, full screen so that we can um, go ahead and drill in a, just a little bit more 
you know, we had that part number. And so Ed wants to take a little bit uh, closer look at that particular part number. So we're just going to look at the item revision of that real quick. Okay, so here's that uh, mounting clamp. And we can see that there are some things attached to it. I know this is the attachments tab simply because it's bolt. So we have a, a PDF, the drawing, the part, and the direct model. That's actually a, a JT file. That's that 3D, um, that 3D image that we were able to rotate around and, and pan and zoom and take measurements of. But because there's also a PDF of the drawing, we get that as the preview when we are looking at our overview. So Ed, you know, engineer familiar with this product. He understands what he's looking at here with this, this particular part. And so he knows now what it is that needs to be done. This portion of the part needs to be moved. Okay, well, let's go ahead and use our markup tool to go ahead and mark this up so we can convey that information to the, the person who's going to be doing the work. All right, so... We're going to say here that um, we need to extend um, in this direction, what, um, millimeters. All right, and so we can go ahead and put our markup directly on this drawing so that as we then send this on into um, a workflow, uh, the person who's going to uh, receive that, our uh, designer, is then going to know exactly what to do. While we're here, I'm also going to want to know um, where this is being used. There may be multiple assemblies impacted by this. I see that there's one parent assembly here. And I can uh, drill down on that even further to be able to take a look at that assembly to understand um, how it's being used. And in fact, you can notice I um, have a parts list right over here on the left. So it's automatically showing me all the components of the assembly. Last time Ed was in here, he was looking on the viewer tab. And so it's automatically opened up the viewer tab. And so we're back into that robust visualization again. But this time as an assembly, as I pick components, it highlights the component there on, on the left or if I pick something on the uh, on the left, it then highlights it in or puts the, the box around it um, in the viewer as well. This helps me to really kind of understand the context of the change and, and what it is that's going to be uh, modified. And I could even see if there were going to be any components that would be um, in the way if I had... Um, you know, extended this in such a way that it would interfere with any of the parts in this sub-assembly. So I can see that this um, this assembly, yes, that's definitely the change that we want to want to make, and um, that's going to um, give Ed the confidence that this is exactly the change that um, we want to do. Right. So I'm just hitting back and. <laughs> uh, back again takes me to my engineering order. So um, Ed is on board with this change. What he needs to do now, though, is to communicate to the people downstream of him what it is that we need to do. So here's a change notice form. And again, this is something that every customer can uh, change to their needs. But uh, Ed from engineering is... Um, going to provide some instructions. Um, so we're just going to say that we're going to modify uh, this part number per um, the drawing markup. Pretty simple as that. Uh, we can pick a priority. Um, it's just going to say it's priority. And like I said, any of these um, company like yourselves can edit this to your needs. They can be uh, drop downs like this. Uh, some of them could even be marked as required as necessary. Whatever it is to fit your company's needs. 
So up on the uh, upper right here, I'm going to go ahead and save those edits and back out of there. Okay, so my instructions are done. Now let's provide some context. So when I go into the Engineering Order tab, we can see that we have these um, groups of places where we can put parts. And so when I say context, it's providing information to those people who are going to receive the workflow of understanding what it is that's going to be worked on. So under Reference Data, I'm going to go ahead and add some things. And this little Add Toolbar, we can go ahead and create new things. We could do a search. And the palette is pretty handy because if I had copied something to my clipboard, it would show up there, but it also shows my recent list. And so I can go ahead and pick that, that clamp that I had um, taken a look at, at earlier and add that to my list. Um, and I thought I had, there it is. I also have its assembly that it's being used in. So I'm just going to control click both of those and add that um, to the reference data list. And so now when I send off my workflow, which we'll look at sh here shortly, this change will have context because the person who receives the, the task will see that these things are, are relevant to the change. Now also, I know that this, this bracket, um, I, I want that to be revised. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy and then um, paste that into the obsolete parts um, folder, if you will. What that's going to do is that's going to indicate to my designer that this is the revision that I want him to go ahead and change, to revise. Now, it already has a release 60. And so what he's going to do and what I want him to do is to roll to the next rev. And that's just implied by the fact that I've put it into the obsolete parts folder. Also, the workflow, the system in, inside of Team Center is automatically going to obsolete this one when the uh, new revision gets created. So there's a lot of intelligence that's going to be uh, executed when we go ahead and execute the, the workflow. Okay, so I have all the information necessary in my engineering order, and so I want to go ahead and launch this into that workflow. So I look back over at my tools, and now up here at the top is Submit to Workflow. So I can go ahead and pick that and hit my little drop-down list, and I have several workflows that are already here. These are actually uh, pre-built as part of Team Center Rapid Start. The Rapid Start is a kind of a pre-configured um, delivery model where we can have full Team Center with uh, specific things already uh, configured inside of, of Team Center. Now, um, for demo purposes, basically we have this engineering order that's been just kind of um, trimmed down by a step so that uh, we don't take up too much of your time, but simply this um, quick EO is going to uh, allow me to demonstrate the capabilities without, you know, overdoing it. Um, we're going to go ahead and just um, say that we're going to modify that, um, that particular part, and I'm going to hit Submit. And what's happening now is that system has now taken that EO, the engineering order, and everything in it and assigned users and sent it on its way. So when um, people go and jump into uh, Team Center, they're going to see it show up in their inbox. Now, Ed here, back on his home, he can see that there's something now in his inbox. And that's just kind of by design. So even though Ed has gone ahead and set up his, uh, his engineering order, he, this is actually coming back to him. So why is that? Well, we want to give him a chance to check and make sure that everything is working as intended, that he has made sure that everything is as it should be. So we um, 
have this chance under description to give him some reminders. These are the things that he needs to do, attaching things into the reference folder um, and so on. You know, those things that he has already done, there's just this little reminder here. So he's already done it. All he has to do is sign off on this and then it will go to the next person in the workflow. Well, how do we do our sign off? Let's come back over here to our tools over on the right hand side. And one of those is perform task. So we're going to say that the uh, the request is approved, and he's just going to go ahead and, and uh, sign off on that, and that's going to go to the next person in the workflow. So if if we back up now and go back to the in tasks or tasks in his inbox, nothing is showing there anymore. But what if Ed wants to kind of keep track of that. Well, he's the one who initiated it. So if he goes into his tracking, he can see those um, that he has initiated or launched. And when he does, he can see who it's sitting on. It's been now routed to Don, and Don has some certain instructions of things that he needs to do. And we can see that Don has not yet accomplish that. So the system is taking care of the communication. Ed doesn't have to do that. He doesn't have to call Ed or said, send Ed an email. Team Center is doing it for him. Okay, so let's go ahead and sign out and go back to our presentation briefly here so we can kind of recap where we are so far. Okay, so Ed has taken advantage of these workflows which are very configurable i didn't mention a whole lot about it other than you know i i have this um workflow that i created based off of an existing one that came with team center rapid star customers can modify those as necessary can use them as the basis for new workflows and all these workflows can be set up either to be um, allowing the person who's initiating it to create um or include ad hoc sign-offs, or to go to groups of people, or go to specific people like this one is. However they're set up for your company needs, it can have automatic participant assignments so that it's getting routed to the right people at the right time. And we get to include inside of that change everything related to the, the request. So the all of those attachments inside of the EO to give context to this change. Bottom line is that we then end up with consistent and managed change processes across your, your company. Okay, next step, we're going to look very briefly just at CAD integration because this is embedded inside of the CAD that the user will be able to get notification of work to be done. And that will include delivery of the affected items, those items that are being affected by this change, and that the user can manage the revision control right from inside of his CAD tool. So here I am now as Dawn. Dawn's logged in to Team Center. And so this is Solid Edge, but it, it works the same with Solid Edge as it does with SolidWorks, Autodesk, NX. They all are using this um, Active Workspace Client, which is what we were just looking at through the web browser. Well, here it is embedded inside of the CAD tool. So Ed is a CAD guy. He doesn't have to jump back and forth between different applications. It's right here in the tool that he uses every day. And he can see in his inbox that he has a task to perform. Okay, so there's this implement change. All right, he's familiar because he gets those kinds of assignments very regularly. So let's drill down in here and see what's going on. Okay, here's our, my typical instructions of, of things that um, I'm going to need to do. And I can see that there's an, an EO here. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and, and drill down into that a little bit more and, and understand exactly what's going on by looking at the change notice because Don knows that the, the engineer in charge is going to be giving him some specific instructions. Okay, so he's saying modify that part number per drawing markup. Okay, well, that's pretty straightforward. 
So let's uh, let's go take a look at at that particular part number. That's probably going to be attached here to the engineering order. And sure enough, there it is. Okay, and so we can go ahead and, and just um, take a look at this particular part. This is released at Rev A, and it said that there's a markup. So let's go and take a look for markups. And sure enough, there, it, the, to extend this, extend it in this direction, 40 millimeters. Okay, so that mounting area just needs to be extended. Okay, that's fine. We can do that. So I want to go ahead and, and open up this part in uh, my CAD tool. Fair enough. I don't have to um, go searching for it or anything like that. I can just simply open up my part directly here from that engineering order. And here it is. Now, right off the bat, the, the CAD tool has communicated with Team Center and found that, oh, hey, this has a status of 60. It's released. Well, I can't change that. Nobody can, basically, because when something is released in Team Center, it's locked down. Everyone can look at it, but because it's released, we can't change it. So even though Don is part of engineering, even he can't change it. Instead, he gets to do one of a couple of things. He can save it to a per, um, new part number or revise it. So Ed's going to go ahead and create a new revision of this part number. So we we'll go ahead and fill out that form and it's saying, oh, hey, there's also this little drawing. Do you want to um, grab that as well? And by the way, it was at Rev A. Now it's offering me to create Rev B. So it knows through Team Center the um, revision naming standard of, of what to create the next revision under. CAD guy, just, yeah, that's exactly what we need to do. So it just has to go ahead and hit the button, and the system will, will do it for him. And uh, load up revision B. If we look up at the top now, it's revision B is what we have open. So I can just, as Don, I can just go ahead and make my changes here. And uh, let's see, that's supposed to be 40. So I'll just type that in. Simple change. Um, but we also have the drawing, right? And we saw on that form earlier where it recognized that there was that drawing. It brought the drawing to Rev B. So let's go ahead and open up that drawing now so we can update it as well. Yes, things are out of date. That's fine. So let's go ahead and update those views real quick. There's what was changed. That makes sense. That's exactly what I want. So just that quick, uh, Don, the CAD guy, is uh, just really progressing along. He's going to go ahead and save this. When he hits yes, that's getting saved back into Team Center. So it's automatically going to prompt him. Do you want to check this in as well? Well, yeah, we're done with the changes. So let's go ahead and, and perform that action as well. Here we are back at the part. So we'll go ahead and, and close the part. And we want to check that in as well. So yeah, go ahead and, and do that. And all that gets put back into Team Center for Dawn. What's left to do? Well, let's go back. So we uh, look at our um, engineering order, and we have that, that Rev A that we performed. Um, if I were to look at my instructions for the implementing change, okay, I need to, you know, revise and modify the part and put it in the part or revised part folder. Okay. That's pretty standard procedure, so let me go ahead and go back into my engineering order. And I'm just going to go ahead and add it to my revised parts. This is going to be the Rev B. So I should be able to just go ahead and search on, well, that was 234, right? And that should show up in my results. 
interesting that it didn't. So let me paste from my clipboard and do my what is um, supposed to happen if, like I said, Ed was supposed to add in the uh, the rev B onto here. Again, I'm not quite sure why it is not showing up. I'll give it one more shot. There it is. My goodness, I'm not quite sure why it took so long to show up on there. But um, by going ahead and adding it to the revised parts folder, what the workflow is going to do is automatically release that for me to rev um, to status 60 when um, it gets signed off by the rest of the people in the workflow. So Don has finally performed his, his work here. So now I can go ahead and do my sign off where um, the part was modified and um, the drawing was updated. And so he's um, going ahead and uh, sign off on that. Well, sorry about that. That was a little clumsy uh, with it taking a long time for RevB to show up in my search results. But now when we go back to Don's home, we'll see that uh, he no longer has tasks um, to perform. OK, so let's go ahead and go back to our presentation. Sorry about how long it took, uh, but real quickly, we were able to you know, go in and look at that change request directly from inside the CAD tool and get it. It doesn't matter which CAD tool you're using. They all work the same with Active Workspace. He was able to see the, the parts that need to be changed in the context of the change request to get the information he needed without having to go to emails or phone calls or meetings and perform all of his is change management work right there inside of his CAD tool. So that tight integration to Team Center is what brings that all together. So finally, let's real quickly go through just um, the last person in our process so that we can look at reports and compliance. So in this case, it's going to be Mary. And Mary is um, a manager and also takes on the role of a checker, you know, smaller company. Many people wear multiple hats, right? So as Mary has logged in as manager, but she can change her role to checker. And what that does is give her the, the privileges and, and permissions of a checker to be able to perform that role as well as her manager role. And we can see in her inbox that she does have um, a couple of tasks to perform. And in bold is this new one. And this is our, this is our engineering order. And you know, this is um, now being delivered to her after Don has done his work. So Don's uh, work, that Rev B, is now attached to this engineering order. As a checker, Mary's going to want to, you know, find some context. Well, what was the, what was requested of, of the change notice? And so she can drill down and she can see the, the same information that um, a Don saw. And so she can she can check uh, Don's work, and and make sure that it is, you know, what it is that um, he's, you know, supposed to be doing. She can even um, open up the um, the old revision in in a new tab to be able to you know look at that um, markup that Ed had done on the on the drawing, right, and. Um, look at the dimensions on the old drawing and compare those then to the new drawing, right? To, to be able to see that, yes, the, the, the change that was requested has, has been made to the drawing. So it can give her that, that assurance that, you know, what is required has been done. She can also look in the engineering order and make sure that the attachments are for revised and obsolete parts are in the correct place. So, so with that assurance, then she can go ahead and, and sign off on this. And I know I'm going through this really quickly, but I want to make sure that I, I honor your time. So real quickly, she's just going to um, go ahead and, and approve this, this task. And, and send it on its way. 
And so what that's doing now is the system is going to go ahead and do a couple of things for us. First off, we notice that the engineering order now is at a release status 60. So the engineering order itself has been released. And like I mentioned, released means that no one can change it. So you think about that, the engineering order had all this information of all these things that people were supposed to do. So now it's released. It cannot be changed, which means that anyone later can go back and look at, oh, well, who made this request? Why did they make this request? What was the change actually made? Who made the change? All of this is, is listed in, in the engineering order. So we can go back and, and look at who did what and when. So we can even see all the comments were recorded. Who did the sign-offs? When they did the sign-offs? We can look at, at the workflow of how it was accomplished and, and when. All of that is, is being retained in the system. Finally, Mary, as a checker, she also wants to be able to or needs to be able to you know, provide certain reports. And so um, Team Center Rapid Start has a number of different reports that are available to us. Uh, actually, a very long list here, and we can look at maybe um, all of our workflow sign-offs. Um, I happen to uh, want to be able to show um, all of the uh, all the sign-offs for uh, for the part number that we just worked on. All right, and so I can go ahead and put in that, that part number that we were just working on and go ahead and generate a report for that particular part number. And we can see that it was on Rev A, now it's on Rev B, and that that, that just happened today. So you can see how we can query the system and get reports back out to to know that not only do we have revision 60 now on Rev B, but we also now have revision or status 90 on revision A. So that's the obsolete status. So you can kind of see how this reporting allows us to get from the information or get the required information from the system very quickly and easily. Okay, so let me just real quick jump back to wrap up uh, this this um, demo by pointing out that we have these automated status updates that the system does for us. We don't have to have people do that. And the, it automatically captures the sign-off so that we have traceability of who did what and when. And the extensive reporting, which I just barely touched upon, covers that re requirement for auditing and reporting. And bottom line is that all this gives you your enforcement of your company's best practices. Okay, so Team Center really is right size PDM to fit your needs today, but also in the future because it's built on Team Center, which is full featured to be able to provide end-to-end -end PLM capabilities. And it's flexible. It can fit the needs of your people in your processes, and it's scalable so it can grow as your business grows. And it's fast to deploy. With Team Center Rapid Start, you can be up and running right away. So bottom line, benefits, the value of Team Center is that it, it improves your efficiencies. It streamlines and automates your everyday processes and tasks so that people can get focused on doing the tasks that they need to do. It reduces your overall operational cost by cutting down on that non-value-add work. It creates consistency and compliance with your, your company standards and best practices. It secures your data so that only the right people can have the right access to your data. And it aligns with how top companies are implementing PLM. There it is. Okay, that's Team Center Rapid Start in, in a nutshell. I, I hope that you gathered the information that you were looking for in this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention, and I am very happy to 